so I'm gonna start talking. Uh, everybody out there on uh, on the Instagram Live, thank you so much for joining us for another Bars Masterclass. Uh, I don't assume I really need to introduce our guest for the day. I I, I can't imagine you don't know him, uh, and if you don't already, like within the year, there aren't any movies coming out that don't star this man so you'll know him if you consume any sort of anything uh any sort of art you'll you'll know who anthony ramos is but uh what i i literally like he's i don't know godzilla she's gotta have it uh what's the the Hamilton, obviously, whatever. Honest Thief was the biggest movie in the world for uh, quite a while during this pandemic. Um, a Star is Born. Uh, everything. Monsters and Men. We got, I had the great honor of being in the same Sundance as Anthony with a great film, Monsters and Men. Um, I, you know, we met doing Hamilton together. It is uh, my great honor to be here talking to my brother, Anthony Ramos. What up, bruh? What is up, my brother? Um, how are you doing, man? I'm cool, man. I'm cool. Happy to be talking to you, bro. Yeah, bro. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for interrupting your workout, making me feel bad. Uh, <laughs> I'm so mad. This fool showed up just like. <laughs> what other? The other like thing you, I'm mad bro, about. You slow. Yeah, I eat. Uh, the. <laughs> The other thing I'm mad about is that we've been we've been living for the last hell of months like within a couple miles of each other, and I haven't hung out with you not one time. And now I'm I'm in Vancouver, uh, and that's really sad. That's some true pandemic bullshit. It, it, it is. It um, is. No, I understand. You know, we get it. Yeah, man. Trying to trying to stay safe on all the sets. You too, because uh, you. Did you just wrapped? You just wrapped the HBO show in treatment, yeah, right? It was my last day. My last day was on Wednesday, man. I was like, "Congratulations! How, you how are you feeling?" We outside. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, like yeah. nah, I'm just I'm excited, man. I'm, that that job was crazy, bro. It was like it was so wild. Like the, like my um like my my last two days. The first day. Like the way the show was set up, it's like for anybody who doesn't know, Treatment was a show that was out like ten years ago, and um, it you know they stopped it stopped, and then they decided to bring it back. Um, HBO decided to bring it back. They were looking for COVID friendly shows. They're like, what could we do now? You know that we can't do um, you know like how we regularly do shows, and um, uh, they were like, yo, let's bring in Treatment back. So they brought the show back, and they made uh, Uzo Aduba the um, the, the, the therapist, she's the lead character. And then the way the show works is there's three patients. So the story revolves around her and these three patients. She like, every episode is a different patient. So basically every episode is a two-hander and um, it was just crazy. It was like 20 pages of dialogue and they would like shoot all my coverage on one day. So it'd be like, I had to memorize, I had to be ready with the 20 pages of dialogue, like monologues ready to go. Um, that day and that was it we got one shot that day for my coverage and that was whatever happened that day is whatever I had is gonna make it to the show so that was a little stressful for a few months um yeah that, Which, like yeah but like that what um this is great because I want to talk about how you became the the artist that you are and what how, what do you think prepared you for doing that because I know you had you had some similar experiences on she's gotta have it right getting like a ton of pages immediately before shooting and having to kind of embody that and use that, like, what do you think, what, what in your training has made you, led you up to that point? Tell us a little bit about like your, your history as an, as an actor and as an artist. I think, um, um, you know, in college, I never understood why a teacher would be like, oh, yo, go memorize this monologue, this whole ass monologue and bring it back tomorrow. I'm, like, I'm not memorizing this shit. Like, come on, man. Like, you know, and, um, and it was like hard and I never understood why until, until yeah, until I got to, she's got to have it. And one day Spike goes, he's like, yo aunt, you know, that whole section, we were only going to do that one piece. And this was five monologues, like five little, like mini monologues. 
And he was like, yeah, so, you know, they were supposed to be shot at different locations, like one in front of a store, one in front of a college, da da da. So we were gonna do them in pieces over the course of like days, different days. And um, he's like, we're gonna do them all today. And I was like, yo, I only prepared, what do you mean we're gonna do this all today? So he said, yo, just go inside the store. He asked me to go into the bodega on the, I can't, we were in Fort Greene, we were in Brooklyn. He's like, yo, yo, just go inside the store, take like 10, 15 minutes and go learn it. I'm like, all right, brother. 10, 15 minutes and go learn it. Thank God we had the scripty right there. I didn't even remember, I mean, I memorized it enough where I could call a line and she could like feed the line back to me and I could like give it because I had remembered it enough. But like in my training, man, I don't even know. To be honest, I don't, need, I don't think anything prepares you for that kind of stuff. Like mm-hmm. it's like repetition, you know, like I learned that I just have to, for me, you know, it's different for everybody. But for me, I have to just say the words a lot out loud. So mm-hmm. I'd be like going, you know, my brother's here with me um, out here. So we would be like going over lines, like just he, he'll play Brooke, the therapist, and I'll just be saying the lines over and over and over. Um, because for me, like when I, you know, when I sing a song enough or I say words enough or I do something enough, that's how I start to get it. I'm not like one of them people who can learn like, like just by reading. I got to like do the shit, like show me how to build that. Don't give me the manual. Like, let me see how you put the nail in the thing. Like, that's like, so, so um, that's kind of, that's kind of been my process, you know, and I learned that over time because um, I didn't always have a lot of dialogue and certain, you know, so, some movies like Godzilla, I said barely anything. I said, uh, you know, hang on to like a kid, but I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you get movies like that where it's like, yeah. you got no, there's all action. There's no, you get, your character ain't really saying anything. And then you got on the flip side, you got TV shows like this, like in treatment where you, you talking for 20, page, 20 pages of dialogue and it's just you, you mostly talking because you're the patient. And yeah. your therapist is like, mm-hmm, I understand, <laughs> I empathize. <laughs> uh, I wonder, because I know, I feel like you've done, you've done so much press. You've, you've been everywhere. So you probably answered a lot of this stuff before. So I won't spend too much on the, on the background stuff, but you, you know, you were an athlete before you started getting into acting, right. And you yeah. are, you know, you're, you're very, you are very much from Brooklyn. You are, you're say like, yeah, and, and that's a huge part of your history. Like, are there things unrelated to seemingly unrelated to the profession about how you were brought up that you think, gear you towards this kind of work or like that you fall back on when you're in these kind of difficult situations or you're on set having to learn a bunch of things having to learn a bunch of things or like you have to suddenly learn a new skill in 10 minutes or something like that like I just remember yo honestly bro like I remember being hungry I'm not even gonna lie I remember having I remember literally being hungry like like don't know you know what I'm saying like I gotta eat and the only way I'm gonna do that is by hustling. Like, I, you know, my mom's was, uh, she raised, you know, two of us, three of us by herself in the projects, you know, making like 31 or $32,000 a year, something like that. So that's like 10, that's before taxes. So that's like, <laughs> that's like $8,000 a kid for the whole year something like that, you know what I mean? Like for each kid, like, and, um, you know, she, she hustled, man, she hustled. And, and, um, and I think, I think that, growing up that way and growing up around like in an environment where I was like, it was just crazy. It was like a jungle. And I was just like, yo, I don't want to be here anymore. Like it's, you know, it was funny. Like I even wrote about, wrote wrote about this in my first album. I said, um, when I was six, I used to sit by the window and I used to be like, I don't want to be here anymore. My mom would be like, she'd like laugh at me and shit. I feel that shit, you know, I, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about those times when I was struggling and I didn't have shit, you know, and like, and, and I have this opportunity now to, you know, be on a show on this network or be in this movie or be in this and be in that. That's why I go so hard because I'm like, you know, one, I would have never thought in a million years I'd ever have this opportunity. And two, like so many people were killed to have this, this kind of thing, this, to be in this position that, I've been blessed to be in, you know, it's a gift, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I worked for it, but there's also a little bit of, you know, you need a little bit of divine intervention, the blessings, you know, if you will, right? Blessings, you know, if you will, right? And yeah. um, 
And I think growing up, like that was my mentality. You know, I, I moved out of my mom's house when I was 12 and I moved in with my aunt. Um, I was 12 or 13. I was going to high school and I lived with her for three years. And I was, um, uh, cause I got into uh, the, the high school that her, her son was in, who was, he was like my best friend at the time. And, mm. and, and, uh, and I was like, I want to go to the same school as my cousin Xavier, you know, for no reason. It was to play baseball. I was just like, I want to play baseball there. I want to be on his team. That was like my motivation. At <laughs> and never thought that I would, you know, you know, that school was so far away from where I lived, you know, cause in New York you get zone schools, right? Like automatically they'll want to put you in the school that's closest to where you live. But then, you know, we, we have to put like 11 schools on the list. So I put my 11 schools and I put that one last. I was like, they never going to, that school's the furthest away from my house, but they never going to like accept me in there. You didn't have to have good grades, but I lived so far. It's long yes. and behold, I got accepted. I walked up to my aunt at 12 at a party. I don't know if it was a quinceanera or what, but I walked up to her and I was like, yo, can I, can I live with you? And she was like, oh shit. And, um, and um, yeah, she was like, all right, yeah. And, um, and I lived with her for three years and I went to school there and I met my high school um, mentor. I'm trying to rush the story because I, this story is so long. Yeah, um, yeah, it's all good, man. Uh, but I met, I met one of my mentors, Sarah Steinwise, who was like a big inspiration in my life. Um, one of my teachers, she, she's a theater teacher. I ended up, I was playing baseball all four years, but my junior year, I was like, dang, I, I want to sing. Like I haven't sang like so long and I only sing at like Christmas and shit. My mom would be like, yo, Anthony sing like this. There's a song called by Hector Lavoe called Aguanile. And ever since the El Cantante movie came out about Hector Lavoe's life, starting when Mark Anthony was in J-Lo, my mom and I like fell in love with the movie. My mom would make me sing Aguanile. Like, because I was always playing Hector Lavoe and playing you know, those, those songs. And she'd like make it a ritual. She'd be like, and every holiday, it'd be Thanksgiving for whatever the family's Anthony sing, I want to Anthony sing for the family. <laughs> so finally I was like, ah, right, you know what, let me sing. And I, I, you know, I want to, I want to sing again. So I auditioned for what I thought was a talent show. And it actually ended up being a musical in the school. They put on a musical. I thought it was a talent show. So I sang Ordinary People by John Legend. And that's how I started. Like, and then the teacher was like, yo, Mr. Cyrus Stein was like, yo, read this this uh she was like yo read these um sides i didn't know what a side was i was like yo i'm not you know what is it? she's like it's, a, it's not a talent show it's a musical and i was like all right like all good so i do the lines and they give me a lead part i played zeus in this musical written by the students called love conquers all i, I was like oh shit like I, I i was shocked to be honest and then um and I did it and I just fell in love, man. I was like, damn, this is kind of fly. Like, let me, let me do another one. Let me see what happens. Let me do another one of these. Then I did the next musical back to the eighties. That shit was fly. And then I was like, all right, you know what? Let me keep going. And then I was playing baseball and doing the shows in school um, in my last two years. And, um, and that teacher, man, that teacher helped me get into college, bro. Like all my applications got withdrawn from every school. Like I didn't have a college to go to um, out of high school. And like every application gets withdrawn from every school, like, cause um, I didn't get the financial aid forms in in time. That was my bet. Like, you know, we had shit going on at home. And we just, we just, it just slipped our minds and we, we didn't, we couldn't, we couldn't get it in. And um, uh, fast forward, my teacher's like, yo, we're not going to give up. Like, you know, cause I was thinking about going, I was like, I kind of want to go to the Navy. Like that mm -hmm. feels, like, that feels like a, a, a sure thing. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, I have family in the military and whatnot. And, but, but my, my, that teacher was like, nah, you know, and my mom kept hanging up on them too. My mom would hang up on the recruiters mm -hmm. in the house. And then I was like, all right, maybe I'll go to community college. But that teacher was like, yo, audition for this one school called AMDA in New York. I went and auditioned for AMDA, the American Musical and Dramatic Academy. That teacher, Sarah, she helped me with my monologue. Her, another teacher name is H. Like, and I'm speeding the story up because I promise I'm at the end, but. Bro, I, I never get tired of hearing this side. So, no, keep going. Yeah, Tell your side. But, it's crazy, like, you know, yeah, you know, she paid for my application. She, you know, she, I didn't have the money and I'm crying in my best friend's room. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this. And he calls her like, yo, I don't know what to do. Talk to Anthony. And she gets on the phone. She's like, come to my house right now. We walked like two miles to her crib. I sat at this round table at her brother's house. <laughs> um, and she helped me fill out the application. She paid the $50 for the application because I didn't have it. The money at the time and sent it out. She, um, and then I get into the school, I couldn't afford it. And um, so I was already, I height got in, couldn't afford it. And then she gave my name to the Jerry Seinfeld Scholarship Foundation at the time. 
She's like, yo, I told them about you. I wrote a letter about you. I told them they need to meet you. And I was like, dang, that's crazy. And she goes, um, I was like, have they seen my grades though? She was like, yeah. I was like, all right, I don't want no secrets at this meeting. You know, I want these motherfuckers mm. to know it ain't, you know, I got a hall, I got a C average. Right. So like, that's not scholarship. That's not a scholarship GPA. And she's like, nah, nah, don't worry. And I go and I meet up with them. And uh, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm talking to this lady named Kate Fenneman who, um, She's like, you know, she's pregnant at the time. I forget she was having a baby at the time. She had this meeting with me. I was like, man, it, was, it just felt like um, it was it was wild. Like we were just sitting there. And she starts crying, and I'm crying. I'm sharing my story with her, and I'm like, all right, man, um, thank you know, thanks for seeing me. And I left, and the school calling me for this loan. I was like, I can't afford it. I asked them to give me one more day. I told the guy on the phone, this dude named Chip Kellingsworth, I'm like, yo, my man, can you just give me one more day. He's like, all right, I'll give you one more day. And then two hours later, Kate calls like, yo, we're gonna pay for your school for all four years wherever you want to go. It was crazy. Like my life changed right there. So that, that moment I think was the beginning for me to even answer your first question. That moment for me was like the light bulb. Oh shit. Like it's real. Mm. Like now you got to go hard. Now you have to put everything you got into this because you've been blessed with this opportunity that you never thought oh. in a million years you get, you know? That's such a, it's a, you know, I, I love hearing you talk about that time. Cause by, like by the time I met you, as soon as you walked in the room in Hamilton in like the early sort of workshops and stuff, like it was, I was like, oh, that's the biggest star in here. That's it. Like, what? Like, <laughs> yo, get like, out of here, bro. No, I was like, oh, it's a wrap. Like, you, you know, to be like, you know, kind of like the, you, you were so like young and like humble about things but like so crazy talented and like every time you know every time rehearsal stops and you just walk over the corner and pick up your guitar and start like <laughs> you know start writing songs and stuff I was just like oh this is the one right here uh and like you could dance you could see you could do everything and it was and and that all of that hunger was so evident and I didn't even know you yet you know but it was just like the your work ethic was so crazy um, and it it always felt like you were doing it for more than yourself. Like there was, which is a thing I always related to, like having a community of people behind you that like give you something even outside of yourself to be grinding for. And I know you think about this a little bit because I've, I've talked to you about it before, but like what, for all of us, right, after that point, there's kind of like a before and after Hamilton moment. Like that that show changed a lot of things. Yeah. And like your your life since then has changed so drastically. Um my mine has too. Like are there are there parts of that like do do bringing that community with you, what are, what are the the good and bad about that? Like are there parts of that that stress you out or are, are there are there parts of that that lift you up? Like what's the What's the, what, what do you feel about still about, because you, you the same way, like you just said it, like I, I remember being hungry. Like, what is that, what is carrying that history with you do for you now? I mean, it, it's, it's the thing that drives me, man. Like, um, it's funny, right? Like people say, yo, bring your whole squad with you, right? And I used to be like, yeah, we got to bring the whole squad. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> whole squad you. cannot come to the party. You dig. <laughs> it's like that rumor is don't believe it. It's yeah, crazy. Can't. Not the whole squad. Not the whole squad. <laughs> you can bring the squad, but the squad's got to get a little smaller too. That's another thing I'm learning. I'll be selective right? about this squad. Gotta, right here. Look, right. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> yo, because. It's, it'd be wild, man. You know, you, you got family members don't know what to act at certain events. And you're like, ah, right. you know, I mean, you learn you learn that kind of thing, too. And and I think when your life changes, people have a perception of what um, or who they have a perception of, like, what your life is or what they think it is. Right. Or And also, like, who you're becoming without mm -hmm. even allowing themselves to, like, actually um, to see you for who you are or who you who you like. Just cause, yeah, and like you know, we do change. You know, people be like, "Oh, you changed up," and I'm, and I, I'm like, "Yeah, I did. I can't be the person I was and do this, do what I'm doing right now. I can't be that guy. You know, like, yeah, I changed. I need therapy twice a week. 
Ooh, because of my, bro. You know, and yes, I changed. I, I need, you know, I can't. I can't be ripping and running and doing the shit I was doing before, man. Because, like, I got to take care of my brain, my brain cells and my heart and my, this is my temple, you know? So, you know, if somebody's coming into my space, or, you know, or I go into someone else's space and I feel a crazy vibe, I'm like, yo, I can't do it. Because yeah, I think as, right, as we, as we, um, uh, I don't mean to, uh, what is it, philosophize or whatever. Like, Please, I, man, I, that's what, I mean, I, I'm enjoying it and I'm not watching the Instagram, so I don't care what they think. But. <laughs> you know, but it's like, yo, <laughs> you feel me? Like, I think, right, like, hey, yo, Davi, you know, bro, like, you know, when, when you start doing the things, you know, you dreamt of doing, you start making the shows, you start making bread, you start doing, you know, what, whatever, whatever you, you know, all the things you've been trying to do, pe- yo, the haters come, mm-hmm. plus the, the family members come out of nowhere, friends come out of nowhere, people you haven't heard in that, people want favors, people want this, people, and you still got to find a graceful way, right, with grace and love to still navigate those things. And then also, like, the stress of, like, you know, like, you developing this show, and then um, ma- I'm making this album and I'm shooting this TV show. Got this movie that's in post and they want me to do ADR. You got this three press things that you got to do the next day. And then your dog is just shat all over the crib. And your girl, <laughs> you haven't seen her in two, you know three weeks and you're trying to spend some time with her. Your mother's nagging and you, you know, all this shit is happening. And it just piles up, piles up, piles up. And then you're like, whoa. You know, and, and and then and then on top of that, right? You know, God willing, right? We want to make a living and we want to make some money. But yeah, Biggie said it: more money, more problems. It's mm. a truth. Mm. I don't care what anybody says, bro. And it's like, and it's it's just like balancing those things and still finding the core of like why you do it. You know, because I'd be mm. lying to you if I said that I know every day why I get up and do what I do. Sometimes I don't. Yeah, I've said to my friends, they like, "How you doing?" And I and, I, and I've said honestly, like. I'll be real with you. I don't really know. I'm I'm busting my ass and I'm working so hard, but I, I couldn't tell you why right now. Mm. Can't I can't really give you a true reason. And um um but anyway, I guess all that I have to say is is um is my my, my the what 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 is so what is a blessing is my tribe, you know. I mean you you, you know you were part of that, right? Like you oh, yeah. and, and Ralph and all you guys, man, we've been friends for so long, like my brother and jazz, like all these people, right? My mother, my sister, you know. Um, my family, you know, my friends in New York, like my friends here, like thank God I built a tribe out here in LA too. Like, but just people lifting you up, man, and and um, and uh, you know, and, and you doing that for them too, I think is is the big part, bro. Because, um, because you know, it's it it gets I don't know, you know, it just the shit it gets so hard sometimes, man. It gets so hard, but it's so rewarding at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's so crazy that Cash Twenty Two is so rewarding. Yeah, so many beautiful things you could create. So many opportunities for not only yourself but for your family and your friends and shit. Um, you know, blind spotting, for example. I mean, blind spotting is a perfect example of family, friend, all of that, all the culmination of all of that coming together. And you guys yeah. create this beautiful thing. You know, and like y'all blessing me to have a you know a little jump off, right? Like, oh, yeah. but um, but anyway, but, I think uh, all of that to say is uh, um, I don't even know if I answered the question. I just OD'd and ranted. No, that's the that I mean, no, this is. Uh, what you're saying is so powerful, man, and speaks, it's so real and so honest. And it's like the part of 